Good morning, everybody. It's Chrissy's Corner for Collectors, and we're starting the new year with a new video. And um, hopefully this can be really helpful to you. <clears throat> I am going to tell you that I'm going to be butchering up some meat. So if it's not something that you don't want to see, then this is not going to be a video for you. Um, it's not gruesome. It's just that you are going to see some raw meat and me using um, knives on it. So... Uh, what's gonna happen? Well, I try my best to keep costs down for me and my husband, and, and food is expensive, we know it. Things are really high right now. So anytime I can do something at home that can make it easier for us, I really try to do that. The problem is, people say, I don't have the time to do that, that's too costly, or too takes too much time, and you're, you're losing money on costs. With time, it's not really that true. So. You know I work nights, it's hard to fit in things. But it is now um, nine o'clock in the morning. I just woke up. I have had a frozen turkey, which I'll explain in a little bit, out for the night, so it's defrosted. And I'm gonna show you how to make homemade sausage patties to freeze at a very low cost. So stick around. Okay. So. It is, <clears throat> like I said, 9 o'clock. I stopped to make myself a cup of coffee. And I've got my unfrozen turkey right here. I'm going to put my uh, apron on. So the turkey, I'm going to give you some numbers if you want to grab a pen and pencil. Just because I think it's important that you understand why I do this. Um, this turkey, I'm going to say is about a 10-pounder. And we got it at a reduced price because it's after the holidays. And then they had some fresh pork. And that, you can see, was reduced to 258. Now, I, whenever I buy reduced meat, I immediately put it in the freezer. And then when I need to use it, I take it out. So the pork is thawing, and I'm cutting up the turkey meat. <clears throat> so, yes, this does take a little bit of time. I've got this bowl here for the meat I'm gonna use for the uh, patties for the sausage patties then I have another bowl back here which you can't see which is like the neck the bones because what I will do with that is I'm going to um cook that up for the little dog to add into her everyday meal so if you've never butchered a turkey a lot of bones so there's going to be a lot of small pieces for this project you're also going to need a Cuisinart or a um food processor you can cut this all up by hand if you're really good at that. Um, for me, it's just easier to use to the, the, that, the processor and be done with it. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking little slivers of meat off, big ones when I can. And remember the food processor is going to cut this up much finer and, and make it into a ground which is what inevitably we want to do. I am leaving some <clears throat> fat for the, from the skin in here because um, it, turkey is very lean, as you know. And so because of that, uh, I, I don't want my turkey patties to be dry. So that's why I'm going to add the pork to it. So the turkey was $13. So if you want to write that down, the turkey was $13. Then you've got the pork, which is $2.58. So we're up to $15. And then the rest is really just seasonings and my time. I am not putting the skin in here, but I am putting the um, fat from the skin. I'm taking it from underneath. So the skin is not going in there. You just gotta be real careful. If you've never done this, um, just be careful. So what's gonna happen? So what's gonna happen is, when I get all this chopped uh, off the, the turkey here, and all goes in the bowl, I'm gonna get my Cuisinart out <coughs> and pulsate it, okay? And I'm gonna pulsate it to get it into little small chunks. I don't want them to be like mealy chunks. 
I just want them to be nice and small so you know it, it'll taste like a sausage and then um, I'll show you I have some um, uh, spices that have been uh, drying over the last couple of days that I'm going to put in here. And then what we'll do is we'll make patties out of them. Billy and I will make patties out of them. <clears throat> and then we will freeze them individually with parchment paper in between them and then stick them in a container in the freezer. And then whenever um, we feel like having a, a sausage patty in the morning, we just go in there, grab two or three, and cook them. Just like you would do with your freezer ones. You're just making them. That's the only difference. They're the same as the ones you get in the store, except you're making them. Okay. So hopefully nobody's too grossed out on that. Um, so there's a bone here, so I'm going to cut along this bone. And disconnect the um, head of it so I can pull it out. So then, like the bones which still may have a little bit of meat on them. I'm going to put in this little dish for the little dog. And I've been giving her little slivers here and there. Um, it is raw, but it's okay. It's not gonna hurt her. I'm not giving her a whole bunch. And this turkey is still pretty frozen, so it's not like any bacteria has come into play here. Okay. So basically that's what I'm going to be doing for the next half hour. I'm going to say it'll probably take me an hour to get all the turkey done. Since the pork I just pulled out, it's not going to thaw for another couple hours. So I have some other, again, you can do this all day. I'm going to go do some other errands. And when I come back, hopefully the pork will be um, done. Now keep in mind, whenever you see meat, that's discounted it doesn't mean it's bad it just means they can't sell it after a certain date and especially after the holidays great time to pick up turkey if you wanted to you could have just cooked this turkey and then had um <clears throat> you know like turkey meat already cooked and frozen so you could just throw it into like an alfredo or whatever you want to do we did it with hams we got two hams uh they were three dollars each I can take them out if you want to see them, but um, I don't think that it's really necessary. But anyway, and so the one, it, the hams are pretty much already cooked. So the only thing I did with the hams was I took one, I left it whole. The second ham I cut, I defrosted it. Well, it wasn't frozen. So um, I cubed it into little cubes, put them on a tray individually, put the tray in the freezer so every cube um, froze and then once they were all frozen I put them back into a square container so whenever we want to make a um, uh, like an omelet or something we just go in take a scoop of that and we're done now by no, oh, no, oh, no means am I a great butcher so if you were looking at this and you're saying oh my god what are you doing Remember, all of this is just going to get chopped up, so it doesn't have to look real pretty. Now, here's a little bit of fat that I am going to probably leave on here. And there was a tendon in there, so I want to get that out of there. Get out of there, tendon. Tendons are the hardest part to get through. So I'm not going to keep you with the rest of this. I mean, I'm pretty sure you understand what I'm doing. And um, I'd rather you see some of the finished product. Get my dandy extra ordinary scissors. To cut off whatever I don't want. That looks good. All right. So let me work on this and we'll be back. Okay, so I finished the turkey. It took about an hour to do the turkey. No lie. I'm going to cook it. Um, so it took an hour to do the turkey, but I really wanted to get as much as I could off of it. I put all the meat back into a big bowl 
and I had to wait to the next day because I ran out of time. So I'm gonna show you how I'm going to make the meat part of it. So remember, going back, bought a turkey for $13, price reduced. Bought those pork chops, price reduced for like $2. So we're up to $15, okay? So, but I'm gonna show you how to make the sausage now. Okay, so I got my food processor with my blade in there. It's all ready to go. I have a clean bowl for the mixture. So I'm gonna start by taking some of the turkey pieces that are already kind of small. Okay, and I'm just putting the turkey, the little chunks of turkey in there. And this part doesn't take very long, it's just kind of tedious. So I'm gonna do half of this with the turkey. Now this piece was a little bit big, so I'll cut this in half. And that's probably a little bit big too, but I can pull that apart. And now I'm gonna add like five, six pieces of the cubed pork okay so I'm gonna put my lid on and I'm gonna pull some Consistency. So I am going to take a little bit out. I am going to repulse this all again. Hey! Okay. Again with the turkey. I don't know what she was barking at. Sorry about that. Kind of startled me. Because she doesn't ever do that. Okay. Turkey. Okay, now this is the big breast. So we're gonna wrap that up. Throw some pork in there. Pork, pork. And this turkey's been in the fridge and it's cold. Okay. So we're up to an hour and 10 minutes, I guess, for me to get all this ready to show you. Now remember I did leave some fat in there. So we got some fat going on in there. I'm gonna turn this on. Pulse, 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 pulse. do the rest and show you that's going to take some time we'll save you some time but you can get the idea it's happy pad me so the last part of what's going to happen with this i'm going to finish up this meat and then the last part is i'm going to add the seasonings in and what i'm going to do with that is i'm going to make my seasoning packet kind of thing you know a bowl of all the seasonings i'm going to put in here and then when i do my next um chomperoo here I'm gonna add all of that into that. So this way, all of those um, seasonings will get really down inside there. Whoo, boy is that cold. My fingers are on fire. So I'm gonna finish this up and then once I get the seasonings all ready, I will come back and show you that part of it. It's fun. Okay, so we're gonna start with, um, let's see if I can center this, where we go. Okay, so we're gonna start with this first. So I took some of the sausage meat out into a different bowl, and I'm going to make two packages of Italian sausage uh, that I can use for like, um, uh, you know, in like lasagna or stuffing or whatever. So I have a, a concoction of dried spices. 
and basically it's about I'm gonna say for two pounds there's probably about three or four tablespoons of dried stuff what's in here basil oregano rosemary garlic salt and pepper I put a little bit of parsley in here um, what else did I put in here I put some like um, all-purpose seasonings like meat seasonings and a little bit of onion powder too so to that to this meat which is ice cold so I may have to go wash my hands in between I've washed my hands before but when it's cold meat like this your hands get kind of frozen so okay so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take my seasonings and I'm gonna sprinkle it all over the top just like that I'm going to leave some in here because I'm not sure that I want to use it all. But, okay, so that's, that's about it. I've used like three quarters of it, okay? And then all I'm going to do is just massage it in. That's all. It's cold, that's for sure. Now, see every so often some of the little white skin from the meat will show up, so I'm going to take that out. It really smells good. And then what I'm going to do is make two packages of ground turkey slash pork to use, like I said, in lasagna or meatballs or whatever I want. So I want to make sure that those seasonings get dispersed really all over. Okay. It really smells good. Okay, so I've got two pieces of parchment paper. Now, and I know it looks kind of, so I'm going to separate this in half. So you get like a pound and a half. Which they might do three. Uh, maybe. Okay, so all we do is put it on the parchment paper. I'm going to keep that parchment paper. Wrap it up. And I've already got two bags going that say Italian sausage and the date. And I'm going to stick them in there. <laughs> it's kind of hard to do. And your hands are kind of... There we go. That's all. Okay, now I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with the breakfast sausage here in just a second. That's going to be a little bit different. Ready to go to the freezer. <coughs> okay, so now I have the breakfast sausage. I put all my ingredients in here. Sage, thyme, rosemary, garlic, salt, pepper, parsley. I think that's all I put in there. Okay, I have some parchment paper. So here's what I want to do. I have this scooper, and it's good because it kind of measures out. So I'm going to take a scoop. Now, one of the things when I was kneading this that I want, I do want to tell you about is that um, if you have to, when you're kneading it, feel through it. This is not an easy project by any means. This is not for the new person. <laughs> but um, so you, when you're kneading through it, if there's any big pieces that didn't get chopped up, you want to take them out. You know, you just don't, you don't want them. So here's a little like large meatball size and I'm going to kind of roll it around and then make it into a patty. Now here's the thing, this is a little bit too much meat so I'm going to take some out. And the reason that I do this is because we are going, uh, the patties that I'm going to make are going to be for breakfast sandwiches. So I want to try one out. You always want to try one out because now is the time I can add seasonings, take away seasonings. So I'm going to make a little patty. And remember, it's gonna it's gonna shrink when you cook it. So this is about a nice size. I mean, you'll have to determine which size is good for you. And then the next thing I'm gonna do, which I'll show you in just a second, is I'm gonna take one of these before I get anything else going, and I'm gonna cook it. I'm gonna cook it for two things. Number one, I want to make sure the seasoning's right. 
Number two, I want to see how small it gets because maybe I have to make them a little flatter. I think this one might be just a little flatter. That looks good. And the parchment paper is really a big help. Okay. So there's a lot of seasonings in that. Um, maybe I, I might need to knead it just a little bit more. Okay, we're gonna cook this and then we'll show you the next part. Okay, so I've got my little skillet here. I have a little bit of butter in it because when I'm cooking my sausage, I will be using butter. So I wanna make sure the taste is right. So, um, <clears throat> put that there. I've got my pie here. And we're gonna put that in there. Again, what am I looking for? Well, I'm looking to make sure that the taste is right and to see how small this, when it fries up, it gets because I want it to be sandwich size, right? Okay, so there we go. It's in there. Now, a couple of things that you should know. This is a sticky thing. So you want to make sure that um, one of the things you can do is you can get a bowl of water with like lemon juice in it and then you can just dip your hands in that or you can just go to the sink like I was doing it, just run it under hot water and just do that. So I've got this on kind of like a medium and I'm frying this up and then what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> depending on how the taste is, I'll either add seasonings or um, I might add a little bit more breadcrumbs if it's just a little too sticky. And it smells amazing. I'm just going to tell you right now. It just smells amazing. <clears throat> These silicone lids are really good. If you don't have them, they're by Luke Crusette and um, really help a lot. So, again, always test. Take one out, test it up, make sure that it's. Um, Gonna hold together so you can see and remember this is turkey and pork so it's not going to be really dark but look at that isn't that nice looking now one of the things i also like to do when i'm cooking this um, i want to get a char on this which you can see mm. i think that's the have some water to the side here. And the reason I like to have the water is because it also will steam it and it'll keep it a little moist, which I'll do at the end. All right, so hold that thought. Okay, so a couple more things to tell you while this is cooking. So once I make my patties, um, I will put them on a piece of parchment paper and put them in the freezer on a flat tray so they individually freeze. When they come out, I'll cut around the parchment paper and then stack them on top of each other. They'll all be frozen and I'll put them in one bag. So we can go into that bag, pull one out, or how many we may need, and use it. Okay. So I'm show you how this is going here. Now at this point, I might wait a little bit, but I'll just show it to you now to, for a time. I'll take a little bit of water. And just <coughs> pardon me, steam it. And that's gonna help it cook a little faster and keep all those juices in there. This is no good. And you want to make sure the middle is cooked at least 165 to 160. So I will check it. I know it's not, so but I will check it. So it's about 120. So it still needs to go. And I'll put a little bit more water in. Yum, eat. 
And there you got your breakfast sausage. So you can take one out at a time, two out at a time. You saw that I put some juice in there, so I want to use it for that. And then, um, your sandwich. Now, I want you to see how big. It actually didn't shrink down a lot. Do you see that? So it really didn't shrink down a lot. So I think that that's the perfect size. I think that's how I'll make them all, which is just slightly less than the scoop that I showed you before. So I'll still use a scooper, but probably just a little bit less in a scoop. All right. Now it's the time for the taste test. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Can you see it's cooked all the way through? Remember, there's not a lot of filler to this. So it's going to be a dense piece of meat. I want to give it the taste half. Plenty of salt. I don't taste a lot of the rosemary and the thyme. I might add a little bit more of that. Is one taste okay? No, we need more. The denseness is perfect for a sandwich. Oh, I'm really pleased with it. Um, I'm going to add a little bit more thyme, a little bit more rosemary, just for my likes. Um, but otherwise, it tastes delicious. So I will we'll take a picture of when I make the patties and put them in the freezer so you can get an idea about that. But basically, that's it. Did it take me a while? Yeah, this isn't an easy project. But it is a time, um, a money-saving one. And a time-saving one when you're trying to make a breakfast uh, you can put this in the microwave. Um, can you use fresh uh, ingredients, uh, fresh herb? You can, but you need a little bit more. My calculations and my recipe kind of thing is based on dry, so it's really good. <laughs> okay, a couple more pictures, and I want to thank you guys for watching, and thank you guys for listening to me, and I hope you have a great day. Okay, here's the patties. It really helped to use a little flour so it wasn't so sticky. I have two layers of the patties. So it's gonna go flat like this in the freezer. A couple hours, maybe six hours or so till they're hard. And then I will put individuals in between paper and put them either in a container or a bag, doesn't matter. And then as I need them, take them out. I also cooked up six of them to have for during the week. They're already cooked. They're going to be in the refrigerator. So if Billy needs to make a sandwich or if I want to make a breakfast sandwich in the morning, it's already cooked. I don't have to wait for it. Just heat it up in the microwave. And they taste delicious. Okay. So there's two bags of these patties. As you can see, they're individually frozen. So all you have to do is pull them out and heat them up. This was fun. I hope you enjoyed it.